Ryan Serhant serves as an example to all of us that it is possible to achieve massive, monumental sales success while maintaining one's humanity and staying true to oneself. Are you ready to meet him? Are you ready to meet Ryan? <coughs> then let's meet Ryan Serhant. What's up? Wow. Wow. This is Adrian. Say hi to Adrian. He's not a protester. He loves you. I, um, I need to give a lot of thanks to everyone who brought me here, Cruise 360, Charlie, the whole crew. This is awesome. I'm in between a couple of massive deals right now, so maybe I'm a little bit stressed out because they're like blowing up my phone. You know what it feels like? A little bit? Yeah? A little bit? You know what? I actually, I love talking to salespeople because I'm a real estate agent, right? You're all sales agents. Actually, no, wait, wait, wait. Sales advisors, right? Who here is a travel advisor? Exactly. I'm going to walk down this little runway right here. This is cool. This is cool. Maybe like a little bit of this, huh? Like a little bit of that. This is actually how you sell in New York. You guys have a much harder job than I do. I walk down the street in New York and I'm like, hey, you want to buy real estate? And it never works. Never works. Never works. But I love salespeople because we are all so crazy. Like, we're so crazy that we woke up one day and we're like, you know what we want to do? We want to try to get people to give us their money for stuff they don't really need. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. That sounds like a great job. You know what? Like a consistent, honest salary with benefits where I'll go to school for it and come home with my white picket fence. Psh, that's for someone else. I want a job, I want a career where there is no ceiling, right? There's also no floor. <laughs> because if I don't sell real estate, and if you don't sell cruises, then we got to figure out how we're going to pay our bills, right? But we all looked at that risk, and we looked at how scary that is, and we said, you know what? That's what I want to do. I want to do that because it freaks me out, and I've got that adrenaline in my system. And I know you're looking at me now and you're like, yeah, well, Ryan, you're on Million Dollar Listing New York. You've been doing this forever. I haven't really. So it must be really easy for you. But I swear to you, the last thing I thought I was ever going to do in my life was be a salesperson. Like if you went and found me when I was 10 years old, uh, when I was 10, I was in Long Island. We moved like eight times. Oh, hey, Long Island. We moved like eight times before I hit fourth grade. Um, and I was probably doing a magic trick dressed up in like a ruffled blouse from like a Shakespeare play because I thought I wanted to be an actor. And I think I had a wand in front of my parents and I was trying to make my little brother disappear. <laughs> right? Like that's what I was into. Like sports weren't my thing. School wasn't really my thing. But I liked performing. I thought I wanted to be an actor. And I thought I really, really, really could make my little brother disappear. If you had told that kid, like that 10-year-old Ryan, you know what? One day when you grow up, you're going to be a licensed associate real estate salesperson in New York City, I probably would have cried. <laughs> Honestly, because that doesn't really sound that great, right? Not like you're going to be this huge actor, you're going to be the CEO, you're going to be this huge person who's going to milk the potential out of life every single day. No, you're going to be a salesperson. At 10 years old, that would have really, really freaked me out. So I really didn't want to be a salesperson. I went to school to try to do theater. I thought I was going to be an actor. I graduated college in 2006. I moved to New York City, and that's what I wanted to do. I hand modeled a little bit. That's a true story. Google it. It's weird. I did some theater. I did a soap opera for a little bit. Then they killed me off. It was terrible. I played Dr. Evan Walsh IV. You can Google that, too. Great times. And then in the summer of 2008, I ran out of money completely. Like, ran out of money completely. And it was either go home to Colorado, where my parents then lived, or I had to figure out a way to stay in New York City. And since I was a little kid, whether it was trying to make my little brother disappear or pretend to do my own little improv comedy show in the backyard or make little movies, 
where I was always trying to make my little brother disappear. I got to work on that. I, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to be successful. Like, that's it. Like, I, I thought I wanted to do theater. I thought I wanted to do, you know, to be an actor, but I knew I just wanted to be successful because life is short, right? Life is super short. Like, it's crazy how short life is, and it is gone in an instant. And what I don't want to do is I don't want to try to be something and then not have it work out and then just be angry and upset the rest of my life. Now, I want to figure out a way where I can be successful, where I can do whatever I want every single day. And in the summer of 2008, I completely ran out of money. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And I had a friend who I went to college with who said, listen, I don't really know what you're good at. Uh, the hand thing is weird. Uh, but you should get your real estate license. And I was like, oh, ah, ugh. Real estate agents are the worst. <laughs> they are the worst. Like they walk around in their suits and their ties and they think they're super cool and they're not really doing anything. They turn lights on for a living. I don't want to be that person. <laughs> ugh, absolutely not. So fast forward a couple of months and I get my real estate license because I, I had to do something. Right? I didn't want to do a temp job. I didn't want to be a waiter. I didn't want to bartend. I, I didn't want to get a survival job where 20 years would go by and I'd still be doing that survival job. I didn't want to go back to school because would that really, really help me? And that real estate license cost a couple hundred bucks. And what did I have to do? I had to find people and convince them to live in a home that they'd probably live in anyway. So it didn't sound like too complicated, which in part is why in New York City alone, I am one of 80,000 real estate advisors, right? That's the competition level that we set. And so I got my license, and my first day was September 15th, 2008. If you don't remember that day, that was the day that a little bank called Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. So for everybody else who had jobs, money, and bills, that was a really, really bad day. For me, the most I'd ever made was 150 bucks an hour, which wasn't that bad, for one day's work holding cell phones for AT&T. I lived in a tiny apartment that was roughly, honestly, this is about the size. Like right here at 38 West 31st Street in Koreatown, I shared a bathroom with 17 people, so I didn't really care. I knew something bad was happening. I just needed to figure out a way to pay rent. And my back was up against a wall. And here's the level of training that I got, okay? The level of training that I got on that day was, uh, do you know people? I'm like, well, not really. I was born in Houston, Texas on a mattress. I moved around eight times. I came here to be an actor, and no, no, I don't really know anybody. I don't even know where I am. I don't even know the difference between Broadway and West Broadway. And they're like, okay, well, that sucks for you. Um, are you rich? Uh, nope, nope, not really. Okay, do you come from a family that's gonna network for you and give you a lot of listings and clients? Nah, nah, uh no, 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 not, don't get that. Okay, well then you go to the street and you find strangers and you convince them to buy, rent, or sell real estate with you. That's the training that I got when I got into the business. But like I said, my back was up against a wall. And I, like, what was I supposed to do? Like, move home? If I had gone home to Colorado in 2008, to this day, I swear to you, I would still be painting fence for miles. I'd probably be married to a nice cowgirl. I'm sure it would be fine. I'd be like riding a horse, but that would be my life. It's not a bad life, don't get me wrong. And no offense to anybody who looks at that and says that's the dream. But for me, like I told you when I was a little kid, no matter what, I wanted to figure out how I was gonna be successful. How do I just, how do I be successful? What does success mean to me? Does it mean money? Does it mean not having to worry about money? Does it mean having lots of friends? Does it mean having lots of clients? What is it? And I, honestly, I didn't know. I thought I knew, but I, I really, really didn't. And so I took that last piece of training advice and I went to the street. Now picture me, not the way you see me now. In 2008, I was 24, right? And I'm going to the street. I got khaki pants, a cowboy belt, cowboy boots, and a green collared shirt. Those were my nicest clothes. Our office was above Burger Heaven on 49th and Madison. So I go down to the corner. Everyone's walking around with the New York Times that says, die, end of the world, recession, everything's over. 
And I'm just walking around to people and I'm like, okay, what do I have to lose? Is someone gonna punch me in the face? Well, it's New York, so maybe. <laughs> like, what's really gonna happen? So I'd walk. I'd like walk down 49th Street. I'd walk to Lexington and I'd find people and I'd say, hi, my name's Ryan Serhant. Would you like to buy, rent, or sell real estate with me? And they'd look at me just like you are right now. <laughs> they'd stare at me with this, like, this kind of awkward smile where they're like, oh God, is he talking to me? What's going on? This is New York, please get out of my way. And then I'd go and talk to somebody else. And I gave myself a rule. No matter what, I was going to meet five new strangers every single day. That's what I was going to do, because I don't know anybody. I'm not from New York City. I'm six foot three in a New York that's relatively pretty tall. You know, I'm not Jewish. New York is relatively pretty Jewish. So I got to build up my network. I got to go find people that want to rent, buy, or sell real estate, and rent, buy, or sell real estate that I don't even know. Like, I wasn't educated on the market whatsoever. I didn't, I didn't know anything about what I was doing, so I quickly tried to learn as much as I possibly could. And I figured my thing was going to be that I knew more than anybody else. Because that's something that no one can take away from me. Right? Everybody else can come from this family, come from this city, do this, have this connection, have that connection, but no one can take away the fact that I'm gonna stay awake till midnight every night and I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna learn about this building, this building, this building, this building, this building. I'm gonna learn who lives there, who lives there, who lives here, who's moving. I wanna know everything about the real estate business and I'm gonna soak it up. Because there's this, also this other threat and it's called the internet. And so people don't really need me anymore, do they? Even in 2008. No, they can find apartments online. Why would they need me, this amazing real estate advisor? Right? So I learned as much as I possibly could. And then the next day I'd wake up and I'd go back to the streets. And I just started talking to random people. Some of them were strange, don't get me wrong. Our office was across the street from Saks Fifth Avenue. And so I also thought to myself, you know what? If someone's got at least three shopping bags in their hands, that person can probably afford real estate. <laughs> don't judge me, I profile people the same way you do, okay? <laughs> What's up? That's what sales is about, right? If you're gonna bling it up, I'm coming for blood, baby. But then it's New York City, so sometimes I go up and I talk to someone and I'd say, hi, my name is Ryan. Would you like to rent, buy, or sell real estate with me? And they look at me and they say, por qué? And I'd say, mm, I don't speak Spanish. And so then I'd have to go and talk to somebody else and somebody else. And then I realized, you know what? Maybe talking to total strangers isn't the way that I do this. Also, I need to pay my rent and I need to pay for food. And if I don't figure out this real estate sales thing or something else, I am going to be out and I'm gonna have to move home. And that, to me, is death. Because when I go home, I'm never coming back to New York City. Are you crazy? It's too expensive. It's too hard. This job is too hard. Life is too hard. Like I say, do you ever have those days where you're just like, man, this is just hard. I don't want to be rejected today by somebody. I don't want to make those calls in the afternoon. No one's going to pick up. I'm going to leave weird voicemails. Like, it's hard. And so I said, you know what, every day is a new day and I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna go meet these people on the streets. And maybe I could try to find somebody who, who like really cares about what I have to offer. Maybe they actually need what I'm selling and don't just want it or don't just look like they might want it. And so I walked into the corner of the Starbucks on 49th and Madison. And I see a woman there who's in line to get a coffee. I get in line to get a coffee and she's pregnant. And she's got these yoga pants on, maybe looks like she just came from like some sort of prenatal yoga or something, right? She's got a Whole Foods bag. And in my head, I'm like, okay, jackpot. <laughs> Pregnant, yoga pants, Whole Foods bag. She lives here. This woman needs more space. So I went up and I tapped her on the shoulder and I said, hi, my name's Ryan. Would you like to buy, rent, or sell real estate? You look beautiful and you look like you need more space. And she laughed. I'll never forget it. This was the end of 2008. She laughed and she said, you know, actually that's so funny you bring that up. Are you a real estate agent? And I was young, right? And I'm like, well, yeah, actually I am. I'm, I'm one of the best in the world. <laughs> and she's like, well, you know, that's so funny because we are actually looking for more space. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can get one, all right. Got it, I didn't do that. In my head I did that. In person I was like, you don't say. <laughs> so funny, because I'm actually about to go show a three bedroom on 66th and 1st right now. And then she says to me, which I'm sure you get all the time, I, I would love to see it, but I'm already working with somebody. I'm working with another agent already, but thank you so much. 
How many times have you tried to sell a cruise to someone and they say, you know what, I already have a travel advisor. Raise your hand. Yeah. Or they say, you know what, I, I book all my vacations online. Raise your hand. Right? Right? Boom. Objection one. But I didn't quit because my back was up against a wall. I needed to pay rent. And I'm going to figure out how to pay rent with pregnant Alice right now. <laughs> okay? So then I said, well, that's okay. There's a lot of agents in this city. You know, maybe I could show you something that your agent hasn't shown you. And I've got a lot of things for sale. And buying is a great investment. And I went into this whole like, preconceived speech that I had in my head because finally someone's talking to me. And then she gave me objection number two, which is, that all sounds great. The market's really, really bad. I don't think I can afford to buy something right now. As you saw, Lehman Brothers just filed for bankruptcy. That part was true, okay? We're actually looking to rent something. Okay. How many times have you tried to sell a cruise to somebody and they say, you know what, we don't really like cruises. I don't know, I've never been on one. They seem super expensive. We're just gonna do a road trip. Raise your hand, right? Or we, we're just gonna stick to the land. We're gonna fly somewhere. Raise your hand, okay? Just another objection. And so what I said to her, instead of walking away, which most salespeople would do, is I said, that's okay. I do rentals too. I'm an agent, I'm an advisor, I can work with you. Why don't we do this? Why don't we just get your information? You know, I gave myself a quota to meet five new people a day. Whether you work with me or not, I'd love to just add you to my database. I won't harass you. I'd love to send you some things. Maybe I'll send you an apartment that your current agent hasn't sent you before. And if you'd love to see it, I'd love to show it to you. And she looked at me, and she didn't really know how to say no to that. So she said, okay. And she gave me her email. Contact one of the day. Remember I told you I had a quota of five, right? Jackpot. Now I run back up to my office and I sent her a bunch of listings right away because I wanted to be on top of it. By the time she got home, changed out of her prenatal yoga pants, put the whole food stuff back into the refrigerator, I wanted her to check her email and see, wow, that Ryan kid with the cowboy boots from Starbucks already sent me listings. And that's what happened and she responded. And one of them she actually liked. And she said, I'd actually love to see this tomorrow. And it was something for sale. So she didn't really know what she wanted, now did she? No, -uh. mm -mm. no you didn't ma'am, uh huh, I'm gonna show you the dream, okay? <laughs> End of 2008, I took her out the next day, showed her that, and I showed her something else that I didn't even send to her. Because no one knows what they want, right? No one knows what they want until you show it to them. Same way no one knows how awesome a cruise is until they actually experience it. And then once they do, then they're addicted for life. How could you ever go to a cabin in the woods after going on a cruise? I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. There must be something physically wrong with you, right? And then I went back to my office after showing her things and I was invigorated. You know what, this is my calling. I just met someone on the street getting coffee and I just showed her a product. That's 90% of our job. Meet the person, make the relationship, show them the product. You can't put a gun to their head, you can't lead a horse to water, all that stuff, but if I stay on top of her, I'm gonna get something done. She didn't like what I showed her, but she said, you know, next week, let's go see some things. Okay, great. So I put it into my calendar. Every Thursday morning, I'm gonna send her some listings, I don't wanna harass her, that she could come and see, and hopefully she'll come and see them and I'll close her. She won't work with the other advisor, she won't worry about the internet because she knows I'm on top of it, and I'm hungry too, like physically, literally. And that was my MO. And in the meantime, because I was so motivated, I also decided, you know what? This is my career. This is what I'm gonna do. Because sales, like I said, has no ceiling. Like, I could just go meet 10 pregnant Alice's. Maybe that's my niche. That's gonna be my thing, right? I'm gonna go down the street. If you're pregnant, I am coming for you. <laughs> because guess what? You need more space. And I'm gonna find you that space even if it's in a convertible two bedroom for 4,000 a month in the East Village with some questionable people about outside, all right? I will take care of you because I know everything because I stay up till midnight every night learning about this business and learning everything. I will be there all the time because I am there for you. I am there for you. That's what an advisor does. And I showed her some more things and she didn't like those. And then every Thursday I wake up and the first thing I would do, send Alice listings. And then I go to the office and I devised this whole system for myself because time management was kind of a problem for me. How much of a problem is it for you for time management? Right? Raise two hands if it's a problem. There you go, that's the hands I'm looking to see. 
Next year, when they bring me back, I want half those hands down, okay? Because no one tells us what to do every day. What they do is they say, go and sell 30 million cruise ships, right? Do, how am I going to do that, Charlie? I love you so much. So I had to figure out what to do. I didn't really have quotas. No one cared, right? I'm a licensed real estate salesperson. I'm an independent contractor. I am only as good as my 1099. That's it. Whatever I bring home at the end of the year on that 1099, that honestly, unfortunately, and fortunately, is the definition of my success, that S word that I was looking for so much when I was a little kid. And so I figured out how to kind of create time management for myself. I said, you know what? Every morning, I'm going to be my own CEO. Okay? I called it my finder time. And I literally put it into my calendar to this day. I'm going to wake up in the morning, and I'm going to think about my business as a whole. That's my finder time, right? What am I going to do to get more business? Because what they don't tell you in any training, especially for real estate agents, is my job isn't turning lights on. My job isn't negotiating deals or client relationship. My job is finding new business. That's my job, is to find new leads every single day. So that's what I did in the beginning of every day. The middle of the day, I'd brainstorm on how I was going to put those things into action that I just figured out in the morning. I called that my keeper time. And then the rest of the day, I actually put those things into action. Whether it was knocking on doors, or whether it was sending out postcards or mailers, or I had this great idea, how do I convince people to buy instead of rent? I'm gonna do a fire, I'm gonna go out into the street, I'm gonna tell people if you're looking to rent, you should buy because sometimes it's actually cheaper to own than it is to rent. I'm gonna go after those people. I'm also gonna to go to message boards and I'm gonna find people who are really pissed off because there is nothing people love more than hearing themselves speak, right? And misery loves company. So I go to message boards and I find people who had a really bad time with a real estate agent and I talk to them. I let them vent to me. Talk to me. I'm your advisor. Just talk to me. Let, me. let me tell you what went wrong. Let me talk to you about it. If you had a bad time renting your last apartment or buying something, talk to me. There's nothing people who are pissed off who love more than going online and writing about how pissed off they are. That's news, right? That's media. No one clicks on things that are good. No one has a really great day, comes home, and goes online and writes about how awesome their day was unless it's a lie and it's on Instagram, right? <laughs> so I'd go after those people. And then again, next Thursday, I'd wake up and I'd send Alice an email with listings. And slowly, she disappeared. Ghosted me, my first client. Completely disappeared on me. Fast forward 10 years to the end of 2018. Thursday morning, I send Alice listings the same way I always have for 10 years. She hasn't responded to me in like nine and a half. She writes me back. Hey, Ryan, so sorry, been a little busy. <laughs> for 10 years. So in my body, like where I'm sending this email, I'm like, holy mother of God. She wrote back. She's alive. She hasn't bought something else. I'm in it. I'm in it. Literally, my whole career, I'm trying to sell Alice something. <laughs> she comes back to me. But as the agent I am, wrote back a nice little simple email. Hey, Alice. So good to hear from you. I know it's been a while. <laughs> Ten years. Would you like to chat about what you're looking for? Actually, yeah, she would. Now she's on top of me. Talk to her on the phone. She says, thank you so much for staying on top of me. Things have been crazy, like life, jobs, kids, all that stuff. I'm like, I know, because I follow you on every single form of social media. <laughs> Jimmy's 10 now. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> and your dog, I'm so sorry what happened. <laughs> what are you looking for now? She says, well, actually, before we were only looking for like a small apartment up to about a million dollars. Now things have changed. I want to find a loft in Soho somewhere between 15 and 20 million dollars. Can you help me? <laughs> yes, I can! I've waited 10 years for this moment. 
Granted, during these 10 years, I built my entire career, my entire business. I got on a TV show. I got another TV show. I just put out a book. I have this vlog that people watch all over the world. I got married. I just had a baby. But I'm here for you, Alice, because I will never forget those prenatal yoga pants in that box of Whole Foods. Because I am an advisor. You don't have to pay me a salary. You don't have to pay me benefits. I'm going to be here until the day you die. Because guess what? I'm outlasting every single one of you. I took her out literally the next week, and she bought something for $16 million. Now, if I told you that story from the beginning, right, of 2018, you'd say to me, oh, well, Ryan, that's, I mean, listen, because it's you, right? Because you, you're Ryan, Sirhan, and the t uh, this, and the ha, 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 ha. Of course someone paid that much money to buy an apartment through you. I met her when I was 24 in Starbucks with khaki pants, cowboy boots, and a cowboy belt. After I met her, I went home to my apartment that was roughly this size, and I took a shower that I shared with a lot of other people, right? That's where I met her. That's where that relationship started, and I will never forget it because I stayed on top of her. I structured my day. I followed up with her, and I realized who I'm actually working for. Success for me isn't doing a deal today. Success for me isn't the cruise ship that you're going to sell to someone tomorrow, that trip. No, success for me and success for you going forward from this moment on is where you're going to be in five years, right? Where you're going to be in 10 years, okay? Who's going to be in this business with me selling in 10 years? Raise your hand. Raise two hands, okay? Because we are in the greatest business in the history of the world. No one ever is going to go to any one of you in this room and say, you know what? You sold too much. <laughs> you sold too many cruise tickets. You need to pipe it down, Bill. <laughs> no one's ever going to say that. Okay? All you're going to get is jealousy in the workplace when people say, man, how, how, how is she selling so much? I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And then you're going to make the decision. Instead of going into negativity, instead of going into misery, you're going to stay positive. And you're going to remember that tomorrow the sun is going to come up again for you and for the next person. And you're going to do everything you can to meet as many people as you can, to sell them something that what they thought was maybe something they wanted, a nice luxurious trip, or for me, a beautiful expensive apartment. And you're going to convince them, because you know more than they do, that it's something that they need. You're going to turn wants into needs. You're going to flip negatives into positives just like that because you're going to work on it every day. And you're going to change the way you work now going forward from this day on because you are the greatest advisor in the history of the world. You tell yourself that. You wake up, you brush your teeth, you look at yourself in the mirror first thing in the morning, and I want you to say to yourself, I'm the greatest travel advisor in the history of the world. And if someone doesn't want to work with me today, shame on them. I feel bad for them. I feel bad for my clients because I'm not working for me today. I'm working for me in 10 years from now. In my office, I have a photo of myself, aged to 80 years old. I keep that by my computer screen and it reminds me every day who I work for. Because the last thing I remember, I was 24. The last thing I remember before that, I was 10 years old trying to make my little brother disappear in front of my parents. Life is fleeting, it is so fast. Figure out what wall you're going to put your back up against. What is it? Is it rent? Is it bills? Is it your kids? Is it student loans? Is it car payments? Or is it just because you want to be successful and you want to be more successful than anybody else? And you chose sales to make that happen because no one can tell you no? You picture yourself 10 years from now, you go work for that person, that person's going to shake your hand and say, thank you so much. Thank you for working for me. Your clients are going to say the same thing to you. Thank you very much. I actually like this song. Wait, stand up, stand up, let's do this. Sorry. Say, give yourself a round of applause for being in sales, right? Exactly. I called you out for one second, though. I guess. No problem. Vlog's over. That's it. Sorry. But you can still watch more. Maybe you can watch this one.
Maybe you can watch this one. See, this one's pretty good. You should watch this one. Actually, you know what? This one seems pretty great. You should definitely watch this one. Actually, this one seems pretty good. Maybe you can watch both of them at the same time. Maybe try clicking like both.